The Ford Ranger has been a hit globally. Our PX2 we've had for over five years, and just recently, we've Harrop enhanced this 2021 FX4 Max. Let's look at the comparison, both performance and ride and handling of these four wheel drives. Winding back the clock to 2015, the Aussie PX2 release was a major facelift to the T6 platform, originally released in 2011. The refreshed front end was the most obvious change, along with upgrades to the in-cabin tech. The arrival of the PX3 in 2018 had a big change to the powertrain with the addition of the 2.0-litre bi-turbo diesel mated to a 10-speed automatic transmission. Our long-term PX2 XLT has been a valuable workhorse and development vehicle for new products. It's proven to be a great all-rounder, whether it's off-road exploring or the tow rig for interstate trips with our heavy-duty ramp over car trailer. In 2016, it was the winner of the inaugural 4x4 Australia Mag Redevoted Custom 4x4 of the Year Award. Featuring our popular e-locker, selectable locking front diff, for the ultimate in off-road traction. And since then, we have been busy developing a number of new products, so let's take a look. The five-cylinder 3.2-litre turbo diesel Puma engine, while nearing end of life for Ranger, has been very popular, both for its torque for towing and the accessibility to the factory ECU for tuning enhancements. Through engineering review, we identified the factory charge air intercooler system would benefit from both larger capacity and improved durability. Our engineering team design brief was to develop an upgraded intercooler that would package in the factory mounting location, along with a heavy duty boost pipe kit to remedy the known issue with the factory rubber hoses failing under load. Our intercooler core is 28% larger and 75% thicker than the standard OEM core, featuring a superior tube with internal fin construction for uniform airflow and greater heat dissipation. This upgrade is perfect for customers with aftermarket performance upgrades, creating higher boost loads, as well as customers driving under heavier load conditions like towing trailers and caravans. Tested and proven on our PX2, we see a reduction in air temperatures across the rev range and uniform airflow through the core. The newer generation Panther 2.0-litre bi-turbo diesel is a revvy little four-cylinder engine mated to the 10-speed auto, so it's swapping cogs constantly and swinging through the taco to achieve its performance which for peak numbers is slightly better than the old 3.2-litre with the six-speed auto. At the time of this video, we don't have software access to recalibrate the factory ECU. Although how highly strung the engine is from factory, the reality is there isn't a lot left to reliably extract. Like the 3.2 litre engine, we have developed a new heavy duty intercooler for the 2 litre with billet quick connect fittings and revised mounting. The physical size of the 2 litre factory unit has increased over the 3.2 litre but they still have plastic end tanks. Under constant load, like towing conditions, we have measured an eight to 10% improvement in thermal performance over the factory unit. Like our 3.2 litre intercooler, all of our units are designed, tested, and manufactured at Harrop, and now also suitable for the two litre PX3 models, including the FX4 Max and Ranger Raptor. Having improved the intake air temperature stability with increased boost, we also found the limit of the factory 3.2 litre turbo and common failure mode. With increased compressor wheel speed to generate more boost, the factory Garrett turbine shaft will fail when spun too fast. We've installed an ATS high flow upgrade turbo with both larger inducer and major diameter 
which reduces the speed below the danger zone while still capable of over 25 pounds of boost. On our PX2, using a speed sensor on the dyno, we measured peak power of 178 kilowatts with 611 newton meters of torque with the ATS turbo, comfortably spinning out to 185,000 RPM and making 27 PSI peak boost. These are impressive gains of over 40% compared to stock for power and torque, and something that you can absolutely feel throughout the rev range. When power and torque is increased on any vehicle, the braking performance is often overlooked. And with the growth of performance and GVM upgrades for the dual cab market, we have developed a big brake kit for improved stopping performance. The kit uses a six piston caliper and 355 mm vented rotor that is 36 mm thick, well suited to support high mass vehicle applications. Our development program included extensive brake dyno performance testing for comparison to the factory brakes with our friction material partner, Bendix. Our big front brake kit delivers a 20% increase in braking performance and a 15% shorter stopping distance compared to the OEM front brake system. So I've run the ISO standard style 10 hour test with all the different parameters, but something a little bit interesting is, and for me to us is racetrack. So this Grattan circuit's in Michigan, USA, yep. and we can run a cycle where the, the brake's simulating circuit laps. Yeah, that's right. It, it'll simulate race conditions. So your acceleration, your braking, same speeds, and we gather the temperature data and performance data yep. and see how the brake holds up. So how hot can you often see brakes when you're doing this sort of racetrack simulation? Easily 700 degrees across your pad and rotor. Yeah, you'll see red hot rotors quite often, so. Excellent. All right, let's check it out. While our chosen pad material is not intended for motorsport conditions, it was a great opportunity for us to put our Ranger big brake kit through some abuse testing on the dyno. After about 15 minutes running the simulated circuit, as expected, while the pad material struggled, our ultimate caliper passed with ease despite the battle scars. Having looked at the brake dyno performance comparison of factory to our Harrop kit, let's now compare the powertrain performance on our 2016 XLT to that of the 2021 FX4 Max. Firstly, the FX4 with our upgraded intercooler puts down peak power of 148 kilowatts and 476 newton meters of torque at the hubs at 28 PSI. Referencing back to our modified PX2, we saw 178 kilowatts and 611 newton meters at 27 PSI. With similar boost levels, the bigger capacity 3.2 litre delivers more performance with a much bigger torque curve, which is what you feel when you're driving, particularly with high loads. So while accurate dyno numbers from our mainline Pro Hub are great, let's see how these ranges perform on the road. The FX4 Max is based on the XLT platform, just like our PX2. Both leaf sprung in the rear to achieve their 3.5 tonne tow rating. The most significant upgrade Ford have fitted to the Max is the two inch monotube Fox shocks. Not to be confused with the two and a half inch Fox shocks fitted to the Ranger Raptor, with its completely unique chassis that handles the high speed rough stuff with ease. In addition to our intercooler, our enhancements on the MAX are limited to a 145 litre poly fuel tank from Brown Davis to increase range, a canopy from Aero Class for more storage capacity, and King Springs in the front for a 25 mil lift. Both ranges have 18 by nine inch method race wheels and 285 tires, with our PX2 running Toyo Tires Open Country AT2s for the excellent on-road performance, 
and the max running Toyo's Tough Open Country RTs for strong sidewalls and off-road touring performance with more aggressive tread design. From the Harrop chassis dyno, we're at the Shockworks R&D lab. We've got Chris, and let's understand the features and benefits on our collaboration, specifically on, on Ranger and PX2. Sure, so yeah, we've, we've had a good relationship over almost five years, working back and forth, and we've had an evolution of a product as far as what we've, what we've built together. So we're definitely getting to the pointy end of development now with our kit, and what we've been able to provide is a car that not only feels stable and safe at high speed, but also a car that if you are taking it off-road, you're not living with it correct so yeah correct. we've um we've developed what i think is a pretty awesome package for the car it's also durable we have local service here as well both being local companies so i think what we've developed together is something that really works so ranger owners have a massive diverse range of uses for their trucks and wheels and tires are different yep. ride heights are different loads so we need a suspension package that is broad yep. in in scope Yep. So how do we achieve that? So with the rear shock, we started out by maintaining the same compressed length of the factory unit, but then having a longer extended length, meaning you have more articulation overall. And by being able to achieve that, we had to use the external canister. So this also means we have a larger volume of oil. So you have less heat generation or less heat buildup overall. So the shock is more durable later into the circuit if you are driving it in that aggressive sort of way. So these ranges that have got the three and a half ton tow rating, they have a big heavy leaf pack. How yep. does that impact shock design? So it's very hard to build a durable shock pack when you have such a heavy amount of compression in a spring. So you need a lot less compression in the damper, but then you need a lot more rebound to control the spring. So having a shock that is durable in this situation that can last the 100,000 plus kilometers, it takes a lot of engineering background to develop something like that. And that's where your dyno comes into and, it. Obviously. And that's where having a dyno and building a durable valve stack comes into it a lot. So something that's pretty cool, your engineering team actually has a depth of capability and experience with Ford as a product yes. test engineer, ride and handling. So Brett's done a million miles or kilometres. Yeah, Dad spent most of my childhood years flying overseas, spending a month at a time overseas. So yep. going to all different plants globally. Yep. making sure not only that the car rode and handled well, but then it would last the warranty warranty mm. period and then beyond that. So this is the remote res rear with the leaf pack rear ends for Ranger. Let's take a look at the coil yep. over for the front. So both the top and bottom mount are both made out of steel. We're not trying to save every little gram of weight in the name of durability. So this is a one piece CNC mount. There's no welds on this piece. Everything is one piece. Even the top mount is made out of steel. Also, by having this design, we have a base height adjustment, meaning uh, if you have a larger rolling diameter, if you have any sort of clearance issues, you not only have the option to then preload your spring up to get the correct travel, but then you have the base there if you need to protect end of travel if you've changed any of the other components on the vehicle. And adjustability? Adjustability is in the top, and being that it's in the wheel well, it's very easy. You don't even have to pop the bonnet. Usually the cars are high enough, so you can just reach right into the wheel well there and adjust it from there. And what's the soft and hard clicks? So we have 12 clicks from full soft to full hard. Yep. So for full soft, that's more for inner city driving or for low speed. Yep going in the four wheel driving where you want maximum articulation. And then from there, winding it up, if you're doing more high speed, you'd probably have it nine. And then for very, very fast driving, then you'd probably put it onto full hard. So as you wind it up, you notice a better on center steering response and overall the body control is gonna get a lot larger, better if you go through larger dips. Um, but then the trade off with that is through small undulations and that kind of thing, you're gonna pick up more of that harshness there. So that's where the adjustment means you can set the damper to what you like rather than just what we think is good. Absolutely, so the, our old PX2 is on, I think, uh, setting eight, because it does a lot of highway Ks as yeah. well as around town, so yeah. it's a great compromise at that level. So we set the rear shock up on the dyno, we've run two test cycles, mm -hmm. full hard, full soft. Talk us through the graph. Yeah. On the lower side here we have compression, the top side we have the rebound force. As we're going left to right we have increasing velocity, going all the way up to one and a half metres a second. 
So the purple graph is on full soft, the blue graph is full hard. So by having this increase in the lower speed, it's going to greatly increase body control and mean that through waving parts of the road, especially at high, high speed, you're going to notice the car isn't traveling as far, meaning that that float is reduced considerably. So it looks good on the graph. Let's go and drive the cars and see what it feels like in the real world. Sounds good. Let's do it. So we're in the FX4 Max first up, 2021 model. They've factory fitted some Fox shocks. What's your impressions on the the ride. Yep. So overall, as a, as a positive, I think the body control and overall vehicle stability is quite good. Uh, the car feels safe at speed. Um, the trade-off of that is that in these sort of low speed sort of sections or where there are harsher inputs, the car is very tight. Uh, so it can be a little bit tiring. I mean, and I guess that's the benefit of our kit is that on the soft setting, we can have a car that's a lot more comfortable, but then on the higher setting we can have a car that's also much more stable as well so i guess the the thing with these they just really feels like the the car is sitting on top of the road rather than breathing with it yeah i find the px2 with the shock works it just feels more stable particularly on rough b roads that are still 100 kilometers an hour it, it it feels like it handles and recovers yes quicker yeah whereas this car it responds well but it almost wants to sort of the, like the event it's, carries it's, on exactly it skips and yeah so we've just jumped out of the fx4 now into the px2 with the shock works what are the initial thoughts here yeah so overall the uh just the, the overall body movements are far lesser i'm not getting kicked in my seat my stomach's remaining steady the car just seems to be a lot more controlled rather than skipping over the top of the potholes. This was the very first PX2 so it's a late 15 build and we took delivery in very early 2016 so it's we've had the car for over five years and what's it got 122,000 k's. You just notice over the step ins and step downs that this will actually step into the travel rather than have this pat. It's just overall just friendlier. <laughs> I've always loved driving this car, like it's it's a workhorse, it, I don't know how many trips to Sydney it's done towing the trailer, yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. over three tonne, but it just does it nicely. And still like over that crest there, the body didn't fall away from itself to the point where the car got nervous. Thanks for watching our Ranger upgrade options and performance overview for the PX2 and PX3. We're excited for the highly anticipated and soon to be released next generation Ranger for Harrop enhancements. And if you want your Ranger Harrop enhanced, contact our team or visit harrop.com.au and be sure to like and subscribe to Harrop TV for all of our content as released.